Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is five products that suck. I do weekly top fives, but it's kind of weird to call this that top five products that suck. These videos, I know I have to kind of do a disclaimer. It's just my opinion. Just because I don't like one of the products from a brand doesn't mean I don't like the brand. I try to be very in depth with why I don't like a product. So you might still want to try it out if you are looking for something in that realm. But I'm not trying to be negative or anything like that. Let's move into the current five products that just didn't work out for me and kind of suck for my life. The first product I have to share with you guys is a first and only nail aid spray away acetone spray nail polish remover. This in theory sounded amazing and I really wanted to try it out. I've tried it both ways. I've tried it spraying onto the cotton pad and then quickly removing my nail polish and I've also tried spraying directly on my nails and trying to use a cotton to remove it. Either way did not work for me. I found that it was really too much of the product was dissipating during the spraying process and I had to use maybe three times the amount that I normally would use in acetone or nail polish remover to even get the pro product off. I found that I was also spraying a lot of the acetone into the air I was breathing and it wasn't very nice or probably even healthy. While in theory this seemed like an easier way to dispense the product and I wouldn't spill nail polish remover on the carpet or on my desk, which has totally happened, it wasn't the most effective way of getting the polish off and I ended up spending more time, more product, so I don't think it's cost effective and I don't think it's very healthy either. I also do have a formula that is acetone free and I used that one as well and it just neither one worked for me. So I would have to say definitely a pass if you are looking for a quicker way to remove your polish. Another spray product that really didn't work for me is from Kula. This is their makeup setting spray with SPF 30 and hyaluronic acid. I was really excited to test this out. Unfortunately, this burns your face. This burns your face so bad. I tried this on camera and it literally burned my face. It kind of like I inhaled a little bit of it and it didn't feel good. I wasn't the only one that had an issue with this burn their face because when I mentioned it did that a lot of you guys said it, you had the same reaction which makes me really nervous that it wasn't just me a bunch of you guys had the same reaction and they didn't test it and like feel like it was a problem I love the concept of a spray SPF to reapply over your makeup I just don't think it's being done right. Also with it being a chemical SPF, from my knowledge and what I've learned about chemical SPFs, it's supposed to go onto your skin to be absorbed so that it can absorb the sun's radiation. I'm not quite sure how spraying the product on top of your makeup is as effective, um, I guess, it's always about layering your SPF. You always definitely want to layer it and it doesn't hurt to add it. But if you are using this as your only form of SPF, I don't recommend it. I don't think it's enough. It's also just a chemical SPF and I highly recommend trying to use both a physical and a chemical. If you can't use chemical SPFs, then just use a physical. But if you can use chemical to combine both because that's how you're going to get the most in terms of sun protection per Dr. Chi uh, is what she explained to me. Plus it stings my face, I'm not gonna use it. Love the idea of it though. Uh, so I didn't get along with this. I love some of the other SPFs that Kula has, mostly their physical SPFs though. Not a huge fan of their chemical SPFs. Next product is from Dr. Jart. This I really wanted to work well for me. It's their Tiger Grass Color Correcting Treatment. So it comes out as green, but then it starts to color match to your skin and it has SPF 30. It also is supposed to help with protecting your skin against environmental environmental stresses. Now the problem with this is that it literally turns my face green and even though it starts to dissipate there's like a green tint so if I didn't wear like a heavy full coverage foundation over it you would still see the green tint because I tried it without anything over it and got made fun of because I had green face and then I tried to cover it with like a tinted moisturizer or like a light tint and it's still the green was still coming through so I think if you have really 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 red complexion this will help you counteract that. I also found that it didn't work well with my dry areas. It definitely like was kind of patchy and gross. Some of you guys recommended using less of the product, which I would totally be happy with if I wasn't also hoping to use this for my SPF. You need a lot of product to have the full protection of SPF. And I found that if I had to wear an SPF underneath this, and then put this over it, it was just a lot of product. And I just don't think you should put an SPF in a product if you're only supposed to use like a very, very tiny amount because it's misleading. Many people don't wear enough of the product anyways to begin with 
and it just, um, you might think you're protected when you're not. It just didn't wear well on me. It caused a textural issue. I know a lot of people like this and a lot of people find it really, really helpful with their everyday complexion and just having a nice protective SPF. I know Rachel from That's Chic really loves it, which is why I wanted to buy this, but I didn't get along with it. The next product is from Benefit and I haven't really been enjoying a lot of their newer products. I love some of their original old school products like the box brushes, bronzers, and I love their Gimme Brow, but lately I just find that they're getting a little too like gimmicky and not in a good way. So this is their Real Big Sexy Eye Kit. This was sent to me, I didn't like it. I also didn't like their lipsticks. I think they've stopped sending me PR samples because I don't like the new launches, which is unfortunate, but I'm gonna be honest. This is supposed to help you like do one swipe and then onto your eyes. I don't have an issue with the actual eyeshadows and the formulation of the eyeshadows. I have an issue with this applicator that doesn't really do what it's supposed to do with the marketing. And if I'm gonna use these eyeshadows individually, I mean, I have eyeshadow palettes for that that's less bulky and that have more matte shades than this. This is a very shimmery eyeshadow palette if I were using it as an eyeshadow palette. I feel like if you wanted to create like a go-to look with two shadows, you should maybe have something a little bit more on the satin or matte side, and then a shimmer. The applicator itself is cute. I like the idea of it. I think it would be a really great concept if it was executed better. I feel like it's very limiting because everyone has different eye shapes. It's not one applicator for all eye shapes. I have almond-shaped eyes. Um, this definitely wouldn't work for a deep set eyes or hooded eyes. So I think in that sense, they, it wasn't well thought out. And I also wonder, like, do people test these products themselves before putting it on the shelves or is it just like this is an idea this is how we're going to do it yeah it's fine let's put it on the shelves because you can't tell me that people have actually made this work and make it look just as good as traditional eyeshadows and sh brushes it was just kind of a fail for me or, uh yeah i would say skip it unless you really love those shadow shades then you can use those separately with a brush final product that i just have not gotten along with is from l'oreal this is the voluminous lash paradise i tried the waterproof version and the non-waterproof version i know a lot of people love this and think it's a great dupe for the Too faced better than sex mascara which to be completely honest i'm not a huge fan of that one either it's not bad this isn't bad i can make it work but i think there are better mascaras out there for my lash type my lash length and my eye shape the immediate thing with this was that i didn't find that it held my curl waterproof or non. The brush was a little too thick and gloppy for me. It had too much product being pulled out, which made my mascara look a little chunky and a little like spider leg-ish, which isn't the look I personally like. It is very volumizing, but it's almost too volumizing because it clumps on me. I just am looking for more in my mascara. I think L'Oreal makes some great ones. The original Voluminous Lash is my favorite. I also love their Telescoptic Mascara, which I don't even think they make anymore but that was a favorite of mine just like their original mascaras this one i get the concept i think if you like the Too Faced better than sex sex <laughs> i think if you like the Too Faced better than sex mascara and you enjoy that one this is a good dupe option for you for the drugstore especially mascara save on mascara when you can because you should be replacing it every two to three months Three months is what they say, but I would say even replace it more frequently if you wear contacts, if you've had any eye issues in the past, replace your mascaras pretty frequently. So it's something that you should look at if you enjoy the Too Faced one. I don't really use the Too Faced one. I'll use it because I have it, but it's not something I would go and purchase myself. So that is everything that I haven't been getting along with. I have some more products to share with you guys. If you enjoy this type of video, let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That qualifies you for my monthly giveaways and also is just help support my channel. I upload three new videos here every week, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday with a lot of bonus uploads as well and I have a blog. Everything is always linked in the description box if you have any questions about where to find me outside of YouTube, but please do check back and see what I've been doing and uploading because I do upload very frequently. I know sometimes YouTube doesn't let you guys know about my new videos. Just always know there are always a minimum of three new videos on my channel every week, and if anything, I just hope my video helped motivate and inspire you to look and feel your best from the outside in. I know when I look and feel my 
my best. I'm just a lot more capable at dealing with whatever life has to throw at me, including a cloudy day that keeps shifting my light, noise going on outside of my apartment. You know, it just helps me feel better and more confident and capable. So if that speaks to you, I'm really happy you found my channel and this community. It's a great community and I hope to see you guys back here. I also just hope my video helped you unwind, de-stress, and take your mind off of whatever it was you might have needed help taking your mind off of. And until next time, I'll see you guys right back here. Bye.